Local TV. First episode here with pro softball player AJ Andrews. Got a couple questions for you. First off, welcome Let's to Memphis. Let's do it. Thank you. Um, first question, how shocked were you to be the first woman to win the Rollins Gold Glove? Um, I don't know if shocked was the word, but I think I was definitely pleasantly surprised that this they were even doing that for Rawlings to decide to give an award to a woman because, I mean, for 59 years prior, they had not, right. the award was only for men. So I think that finding out that I was a finalist, I was, I don't even know if I was shocked. I think I was just numb. I didn't really understand what was going on. You right. know, I didn't know if it was the real gold love or this was just a separate entity for women. And I think that it's really awesome that it is the gold glove, right? So you can't say the first woman's gold glove. Right. It's no, she's the first woman to win a gold glove. And I think the way you, you say that is really important. And it definitely talks about the power behind winning it. So I think that for me, it was exciting. So rather than being shocked, it was exciting the fact that barriers were going to be broken and that I was now a pioneer for women in sports to, to dream more, to achieve more, to aspire to be more because this now, something that once seemed impossible was now possible. And I hope that this was only going to be a door that led to more doors opening. On our way down here, we were talking about your experience in college. And much like PJ and myself, you had a show in college, My Way with AJ, mm -hmm. where you challenged people across Death Valley, I guess. Even though I'm a Florida fan, it kills me to talk about that. Who's a Florida fan? I <laughs> so in the weird. SEC. Yeah, go down to freaking Lanesville. Where you challenge people, and vice versa, they would mm -hmm. challenge you if, if you're a sport. Where did you come up with that idea? Just my old creative noggin, I guess. I don't know. I just came down to the fact that, I mean, I was friends with a lot of athletes, a lot of different athletes, and I think that it's always really interesting to see what other athletes can do because I always talk about I love gymnastics but I know there's not a single thing I could do in gymnastics right. and I think that that is so awesome how sports are so specific and you can be the greatest athlete on the planet but you never know how hard a certain sport is until you try it and I think it's just really fun to expose it because when you have I don't know the best linebacker in the country who I faced Devin White um, <laughs> trying to play softball it's just really eye-opening to say oh wow you know what I mean? It's just funny. And it's funny. Um, yeah. A lot of the people I go against are characters. They're all really good sports about it. So it's just an opportunity for fans to see the athletes outside of their sport and just really see our personalities. Now, you made an appearance in the ESPN The Body Issue. Sure so did. How important... Check that out, huh? How important is strength conditioning to where you got now? Well, strength and conditioning is all about being just being very disciplined as an athlete, I think. And I think that when it comes down to it, you never know what you're capable of until you push yourself past that limit. I think our minds give up way before our bodies do, and strength and conditioning is just something that really shows us what we can achieve before we get on the field, right? If we have a conditioning test, I mean, it's so mental. Yeah. You know, I don't think you can ever meet an athlete that's not stressed out or, you know, Awesome concerned long. about right concerned about a conditioning test and then we come out and kill it you know what I mean it's just a big confidence boost and I think all the things that we do outside of our specific sport to get ready for that sport transcends and it completely it's a, a total package to the confidence you have as an athlete so I think strength and conditioning is not just important for you to be in shape for the game physically but to be shaped mentally for the game now we're here in the Rhodes College softball locker room so what do you have to say it's not only the Rhodes College softball players, but softball players across the country on what they have to do to take their talents to the next level like yourself? I think that you have to definitely take yourself to the next level. You cannot be concerned about who you are or where you're from, right? I mean, there are athletes, you don't think about, oh, I'm not a D1 athlete, I can't do this, or I'm only this. I, I think that all of that is what we're conditioned to think. It's what is socialized to believe. And there are so many examples of people that are not at these D1 colleges, these big schools that are out here doing awesome things. Talk about Carson Wentz for an example, right? You can think of so many, I think of so many people that have excelled at the top, top level that maybe society wouldn't think would do so. So I think that in order to get there, you just have to believe you can be there. You have to work hard, believe you can do so. Understand that stats speak for themselves. It doesn't matter what school you are. If you come out to no matter where you play and you have unreal stats, that's something people are going to notice. You're going to look at and they're going to want to, you're going to be in conversations no matter where you play, 
or what you're doing. So I think just focusing on you, doing what you have to do to get better, and focusing on your goal. And if your goal is to play the next level, don't let anything or anyone deter you from that. It's Bryce Hayes, Cannock Host TV, AJ Andrews. See y'all. Bye.